And away we go. What's up, MMAniacs? It is time once again for your weekly MMA show, Split Decision, brought to you from the Ruloff Family Inc. studios. Bueller and Dodge at the mics. A big thanks to Fight Fans Radio Network for still showing us love. Catch us on their Spreaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. We have our own Spreaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, as well as back on iTunes. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. What, did we, what were we last week? Like what? a really cool new addition or something like no, that? No, we're still we're still new and noteworthy. New if and you noteworthy. Open up, yeah, if you open up podcast on iTunes, we're front page. That's yeah. awesome. I fact-checked it, too. I was yeah. like, no way. He thought, it, he, he thought I was bullshit. He thought it was Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can add a logo over somebody else's logo. <laughs> I couldn't. I just, <laughs> I, I'd be doing it in Microsoft Paint, and it would look like shit. So, uh, Anyway, also, of course, get us on uh, Facebook, which is Split Decision MMA Podcast. And if you want us on Instagram, as well as Twitter, SD underscore MMA. Is Albert still doing that? Sometimes. Uh, when he can. When he can. <laughs> When he can. When he's not injured. He's, he's got a lot going on. Oh, he's eating. Burger, burger. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Xbox. In between Xbox. burgers and Xbox. Burger, Xbox. Burger, <laughs> Xbox. And you can find Joey on Snapchat now, right? Fuck that. I'm not doing Snapchat. <laughs> How many pictures of balls did you get today when you announced your own just, Snapchat? Just, <laughs> just, the one, just the one that you drew, man. I'm gonna you you didn't have the balls to take a snapshot of work. your own balls? I was at work. Yeah, like that's ever stopped you, bud. <laughs> Dude, I don't even... I don't Middle even, of lunch rush. I don't <laughs> Yeah, never, never install Snapchat assuming you're going to get tits right away because that does not happen. No, you get balls right away. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're tits without nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Those are wrinkly, hairy tits, man. Hey, mine were shaped. Knock my women. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump off with some news here, a little recap of the Ultimate Fighter as well. That's pretty much all we have for you this week and kicking it off. Of- Ultimate oh, Fight Night, too? Ultimate Fight Night, that's right, last week. Sorry. My he can act like it didn't happen. God, I know, right? Like, that whole thing didn't happen? It didn't happen. Well, let's start off with, uh, how about Eddie Alvarez is no longer going to be on the pay-per-view for does Bellator. This, does this count as we called it? Yeah, I think it does. It wasn't Tito's fault. It's but shocker. It wasn't Tito's fault. <laughs> so far, it's a shocker. I, no, because it's still... It, it's it, a shocker that it's still happening. Yeah, that's they're, the thing. They've now made Rampage and king mo the main event wasn't that supposed to be a main event like back in october though no that was rampage tito i'm gonna look oh. up the sales I, I don't think they got the sales, sales are not looking too good as far as i know um it's not eddie alvarez basically suffered a concussion in his training camp he's been pulled from the fight <laughs> and got, got hit in the head with tito's head <laughs> this is not, this, this pay-per-view is not gonna happen it's gonna hit same thing that it's, it's on saturday happen. It's tomorrow or it's two days from now? It's two days from now. It's still not going to happen. And they're saying it's going to (laughs) happen. There's no way. I don't buy it. I'm definitely not going to buy it. (laughs) (laughs) Rampage claims, though, that his fight and King Mo's fight is worth the pay-per-view alone, specifically because he says uh, it's one of the few grudge matches going on in MMA right now where we actually don't like each other, which I I call bullshit on. I think it's a bunch of just, please buy our pay-per-view. Two Hollywood (laughs) showboats trying to out-showboat each other is what that fight is. Please buy our pay-per-view. Yeah, Otherwise, only, we're not going to make any money. The only way that fight could get any more showboaty is if Rashad Evans was in the mix. That, as the referee? Yeah. <laughs> that actually might sell more pay-per-views. It's, and he gets to bring possible. a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> TLC match, dude. TLC match. I mean, if we look at... There's a whole article going on right now. Non-UFC MMA pay-per-views and versus their, their buy rates and everything. That Anything out of Pride, the highest one they had was only 30000 Wow. It was Affliction. Uh, Affliction had a hundred thousand. Interesting. Uh, unfortunately, that was a hundred thousand less than they thought, and it also folded after the next one because oh, Fedor yeah. wasn't on it. Exactly. Um, Bodog had theirs. They they made thirteen thousand. They had thirteen thousand buys, which is pretty low. Um, World Fighting Alliance didn't even get. Oh, didn't even That's get funny. anything. That's they were funny. only able to fill um, a quarter of the seats <laughs> at the forum. Uh, Strike Force when they had their pay per view was thirty five thirty five thousand. World World Extreme Fighting. Now, mind, mind you, World Extreme Cage Fighting, which was WC, when the UFC bought it, did 175. Ah, uh, okay. Now, at the same time, it was the UFC prevents or presents World Series or World Extreme Cage Fighting all over its favor. So it kind of blurred the lines there a little bit. A little bit, but even even with the UFC promoting it, it's still uh, far and away from any UFC buys. Hands down. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think? Do you think they're gonna how many buys? How many buys? Since apparently this is happening. This is going down on Saturday. How many buys is is this going to get? Is Bellator going to get? Uh, I'll give them thirty. I'll give them twenty five. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna undercut you a little undercut bit. Undercut me? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna give him thirty. I bid one dollar, Bob. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> one one dollar. <laughs> what's we'll the thirty thousand? What's the lowest bid? Twenty thousand. Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty. Doing twenty. I'll go thirty one. Ooh. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Shit, let me change Son my, of a bitch. Can I change mine to thirty one, please? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. I don't know. From what I'm reading, I guess they can't pull out at this point. Oh. They can't pull out of a pay-per-view? Yeah. Uh, how is that not possible? John Jones did that to the UFC. I don't, what, I don't know. two days notice? No, Strike for, or Pelator can't pull out of the pay-per-view. Pelator can't. Yeah. So no matter what the pay-per-view happens, with or without the main event. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. There'll be a lot of refunds issued. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you want to look at the card real quick while I have it up? Yeah. So we have your main event now is Rampage Jackson going up against King Mo. Michael Chandler is now going to be fighting Will Brooks. So it's not going to be Eddie Alvarez and Brazil with concussion. Tito Ortiz that, that's is That's got fighting. my attention right there. I want Michael Chandler and Will Brooks. <laughs> that's getting my 20 bucks. Tito Ortiz is fighting Alexander Shalenko. Um, Michael Page against Ricky Rainey. Alexander Volkov against Blagny Ivanov. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jack Congo is going to be on this card. Yeah, that's about all I see. How much are they charging? Uh, it's like thirty nine ninety five. Nope. <laughs> That's nope ninety five to me. Nope ninety five. <laughs> nope ninety five. I know you can't even get ten dollars out of us to watch the other fights. <laughs> <laughs> Which you get like two or three weeks of fights to watch, right. and they're going to try to get the forty for a bunch of guys that they picked up at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got them at the fights wanted at Craigslist. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> fighters look fighters seeking fights. fights. <laughs> Um, I do like Tito Ortiz talking about his upcoming fight, though, for the pay-per-view. Um, he says, you know what? He's like, I still want to fight Rampage, but that's for later. Right now, all I'm doing is I'm thinking Shlomenko, eating Shlomenko, sleeping Shlomenko, shitting Shlomenko. I promise the fans who tune in, uh, I'm going to give them everything I have. It's really weird they took that as the quote. Right? Because of that being the quote at the top of the, the, well, the headline the of the article. article. I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's not because I'm shitting Shlomenko doesn't make sense. It doesn't stand alone. doesn't just stand alone for you? It does not stand on its own at all. To say that you're shitting somebody, that you're kidding him? Uh, yeah. In context, I guess it makes more sense, but I was like trying to put Even then, though, why would... I don't think anybody's ever said that. Eat, sleep. Stomping. Eat, sleep, like breathing. Eat, sleep. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Tito, um, <laughs> he apparently had a guy that was living in his house, uh, in a house that he owned. <laughs> All right. Okay. He kicked the dude out because he didn't pay rent. And then somebody, the guy stole a bunch of stuff and put it in a storage locker. This other guy comes along and buys the storage locker on an auction and found all this stuff with Tito's. That's Tito's. He found, uh, there's 350 prints, there's uh, gloves, there's just tons of memorabilia, there's, I mean, autographed pictures, there's fight passes, there's art, there's, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Tito Ortiz is upset now trying to sue the guy. The guy who bought that, the locker? Yeah, the guy who bought the locker because he put it all on Craigslist. And he's like, you can't do that. You can't I mean, do that. It's v- I mean, it's VHS type. Look at VHS tapes. I mean, but isn't banners. it stolen merchandise? He has to prove that it was stolen. Did he report that it was stolen? If he didn't report that it was stolen. No, right? not until now. That he, this guy's selling it on Craigslist. Nothing you can do about and he, it. And he, he told, the guy apparently told Tito, hey, look, I bought it for like eight grand. You give me eight grand, you can have all your shit back. Right. And he's wow. like, no. He's like, no, I'm, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. This is all my stolen property. I mean, it's going to be like the whole OJ thing. He's going to get somebody to kill him. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like, that's that what it's going to end up. It's going to end up being Tito I don't think Ortiz. Tito actually will make it because he's going to crash his car on the way there, but, you know. <laughs> What's he going to go sell some of his prescriptions? He's like, what you in for? Same thing as you, Jay. Yeah. Trying to get my shit back. I mean, it's just, it's, how do you feel about the whole thing? How do I feel about that? I mean, first off, how vain is Tito to have this much shit of his own in his house where he doesn't even notice if it gets stolen? That means he's got he's so saying, much more of his own like shit of him. At in a his recent house. in a recent article, he or interview, he recently just said, "Look, I just want all the pictures of me and my kids back. You can keep everything else." He's like, "There's pictures," and then he's like, "And there's mail. I want the mail that's in there. It's mine." Bills, huh. like late rent. Just says bail. Uh, he just says <laughs> unopened mail. It's the third notice. Yeah, is that what it is? I need that man. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta get that. My electricity got shut off last oh, week. Oh well, that opens up a whole nother. Otherwise, thing. I don't I mean, know my like, account number. I need that bill. <laughs> maybe it's like some freaky bills. Oh, yeah, it could be. Penis enlargement. <laughs> Blame that on Jenna. Steroids. <laughs> Blame that on Jenna, too. Why not? So, guess what's getting remade? Why Why make why remake Kickboxer, man? They're going to remake Kickboxer, and who's going to be the star? So, GSP. GSP. He's just done fighting, man. Well, he gets to play Jean-Claude Van Damme, which was a childhood hero, and everyone knows that he pretty much acts and looks like Jean-Claude Van Damme with his accent and his kicks and... 
Yeah, no, he. So GSP is just done. And now he's going to be remaking uh, Kickboxer. He's going to go the way of the Corona. Would you rather him remake Bloodsport instead? <laughs> go yes. the way of the Corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would rather him remake Bloodsport. I don't think he can remake Bloodsport though because Frank's do. Frank Dukes. Dukes. No, I want you want to see him remake. I want to see him remake Lionheart. Lionheart, that'd be good. Leon. Since technically he was French in that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be down to watch that. Since that was like the first. Which was pretty much the same movie again. It was a cage fighting movie. First cage fighting movie I ever saw. Yeah, so you got Lionheart, Kickboxer, and Bloodsport. I'm down. They're all pretty much the same, right? Sign me up. <laughs> and then put him in a Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> As a villain. <laughs> He's got to be a villain. <laughs> right alongside Jason Statham. <laughs> a, a Fast and the Furious, a Triple X. Something. Yeah. Something. Gotta Something. get him in there. Triple X. A crank. They, Let's they get him in a speed. Triple X. Triple X. Why, do you, mean, why do you want to see him There was only two, a, right? You want to see him with a Triple X crank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, Frank Dukes is apparently going to have a voice versus with uh, Michael Chavello coming up this Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, on Access TV. Oh, God. And I already watched the first little snippet of it where he says, A, the UFC was um, completely revolved around him. Mm-hmm. They kept asking him to compete but he was unable to do it so they just took everything that he talked about and made it into the UFC and he also says that he still is undefeated when he retired and he was the one who showed Boss Rutten the liver punch and kick I like to see him say that to Boss Rutten I know I'm waiting for Boss Rutten to like see this this interview and then like respond so wanna... he's the little Richard of MMA he is <laughs> he was like that guy that we had the picture of before that had yeah. all his belts oh, he gave guy... all that guy his belts <laughs> yeah he gave all that guy his belts <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, dude. I mean, Frank Dukes is, especially because when you, if you know the origin of UFC, so that means that Frank Dukes actually went down to Brazil. Oh, he says they were doing their little tournaments and challenges before, but you know, right? It's all based on him. They right. asked him to compete, and they asked for all his ideas. So he's the one who came up with the octagon. No, that's the only thing he credits them for. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Whatever. All right. It's a culmination of uh, I don't even know how many things. Yeah. It's ridiculous, man. But Frank <laughs> Tukes is nuts. The guy's out of his mind. Yeah, he's wearing sunglasses the whole interview. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> Andre Arlovsky is in the UFC. Tim Sylvia is not in the UFC. We've talked about this before. Tim Sylvia is trying to get into the UFC to fight in the main card. Uh, in Maine, not as in like the main card. He was always going to be on Fight Pass. But <laughs> 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 we're talking about in Maine, the state. Um, why would he want it? Why would he just want to like just face his home state like that? Like, let me come get my ass kicked in my home state, please. Dana White. I mean, people are saying, why can't he not fight? And he basically says, look, Tim Sylvia, he's o three and one in his last four fights. Uh, it's tough to bring him into the UFC with that kind of record outside the UFC. Unlike Andre Arlovski, who's six and one with his sole loss coming up against Anthony Johnson. Um, you know, he's on a win streak. I like him. I have a lot of respect for him and his people. He's like, he's he left the UFC to go fight somewhere else. It's not personal. You know. Yeah, this good. isn't fucking Bellator, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I like, I'd like so to see instead, what... he's going to fight any F up against Christian Moorcraft, which is also go down in Maine. All right. <laughs> That's who Tim Sylvia's fighting? That's who Tim Sylvia's fighting. Christian Moorcraft. Christian huh? Moorcraft, who also was in the UFC at one point. Yeah, yeah, it was for a minute. <laughs> Blink and he's gone. Oh, well. I want to know who Arlovski's going to fight, though. So I, don't wanna, I need to know this. Remember that we already talked about? He's fighting Brandon Schaub. Yeah. It's glass jaw against glass jaw. That works. For the glass Joe jaw Joe. But that's not official. Didn't we pick this? No, it's that's official. It's official? Okay. That's official. Oh no, we had a couple other picks that we'd much rather we were see. Tra- yeah, we were trying to find some other things. That's right. <laughs> like Frank Mir. <laughs> yeah, all Tim right. Sylvia. <laughs> on we go. Okay, moving on a little bit to the UFC uh, we'll, we'll move on to that in a second. Let's start here. We'll go with Dan Henderson, Chill Sonnen are both licensed to have TRT while fighting in Nevada, which I think is very strange. That is very strange. Very strange. What? Wait. Yep. Both of them have been licensed in the state of Nevada. I don't understand. This is bullshit. It's banned across the board. Now it's allowed again? No. Um, it's banned across the board, meaning anybody who was licensed before was going to be banned as well. So if you had already tested positive for something before, you were not going to be able to get a license. These two guys are allowed to have licenses because they were on TRT and not on steroids. So they're grandfathered in? Vitor had steroids in Vegas, got busted, cannot have TRT, cannot come in. I I guess I just misunderstood. I thought they were just saying no more TRT, period. There is no more TRT, period. But I'm saying is they were were getting licenses even though they've had TRT. Where Vitor will not be getting a license because he was also Ah, on steroids. So they're not getting the, they're not allowed to use TRT. Right. Okay, got it. Got it. So, is that what, now? I'm really lost. <laughs> so even it's because they were using something that was legal, they are allowed to fight in Nevada. Vito yes. Belfort is still not allowed to fight in Nevada because he got busted using something illegal. Yes. Got it. Okay. Good enough. 
No? Yes. So confused. No. <laughs> Talking about uh, John Jones, Boss Root was recently on. Shut the, f- uh, shut the fuck up. Boss. His his uh, <laughs> show Inside MMA, they talked about, is John Jones a dirty fighter for shoving his fingers in people's eyes? No. Boss Root says, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shit. He says, let me explain. He's like, the guy is a very calm, methodical fighter. He says, because of that, he looks like a dirty fighter. He is a dirty fighter. If you are putting your hands out, putting them on the guy's face, you are a dirty fighter. You're a dirty podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to have pink eyes. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> you don't think he's dirty for, for stabbing people in the eyes? I, I, he it, says, look, you for can... For a practice that, that's done so much, I, I don't think so. There's a lot of fighters that do the same thing. Yeah, but he was keeping... The, again, the boss's thing is He's saying, got the longest... Some of the longest arms, bro. Of the wire fingers what, out. Is, but I'm just saying. Why your fingers out. But there's a lot of fighters that do that. Yeah, but he, he's saying he's a dirty fighter because he was slow about it and like rubbing his face... With his hand, it's not like he was like just you know sticking sticking his fist there. He was like rubbing his face. I keep thinking, I keep thinking of the old Looney Tunes movie where they're like none of this and none of that, <laughs> right? none of those, and don't do none of this. So I mean, he was constantly rubbing him in the face. It's not like you just prodded. So was, what I'm getting is you two, like you two, you, said, you two, kid, you, two you can't put your hand on somebody's head. I mean, that's that's putting what, fingers that's, in the face. That's what I see it. Is. If he's putting it's, his fist yeah, up but, there, that's different. Both Diaz brothers do the same thing. I don't think they do. No. They're always, always with the hand. Always with. Where, yeah, but you're talking about where they're checking distance. No, but yeah. it doesn't matter. But he's touching it, dude. Especially Nick. Nick but touches their face, his, and they're like you said, like you said, he palms their head a I lot. I don't know about that. He puts his hand out there, but then he quickly switches it to a fist to punch him. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, the second that he touches, or Jones him. is like constantly just like rubbing the face. <laughs> <laughs> we hey, next week webcam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so much I'm better with the webcam. Go wash my face. Man. <laughs> I agree with Rudin. I, I don't think know. I don't know where your hands have been right we've before talked, you got here. We've talked about that. I think he's, it's a little dirty. He need, does need to keep his hands back, or at least closed. I mean, you can compare it to like the Diaz brothers and stuff. I understand what you're saying, but I think that Jones is like that times ten. I'm just saying, if he had pygmy arms, it wouldn't look so bad. No, because he would never be able to be able to big brother people. He wouldn't be able to big brother people at all. Little T Rex arms. Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, I'm trying right now. I'm trying. <laughs> Stay like that. <laughs> According to Quentin Rampage, Jackson Mayhem is going to be making a comeback. He has been helping him train for King Mo. He said his knee is fixed. He's motivated. He's going to make a comeback. First guy to fight in a straight jacket. You mean Bellator. Come back to MMA. Didn't say UFC. Just making a comeback. He's never coming back to UFC. No. I think it'll be cool if they do that. If all these guys that fall out of the UFC go into Bellator and then fill up the ranks up there. I think it'll be cool I mean, that's the hell. retirement league that's, we were talking about, yeah, right? That's I mean, pretty much been... what they're trying to do anyway. <laughs> All the fallouts. Yeah. You all right with that? I'm fine. Yeah, whatever. Man, Miller comes back. It's like it wasn't exciting. It's just that there's crap outside. The antics outside that kept him from getting back in the cage sucked. I think if we'd had more footage of more of the antics. You just want to see him naked in a church. No, that's that's probably the least I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so recently, uh, openly gay uh, football player was drafted in the NFL. This got brought up to the UFC and to a lot of the fighters saying, do you think that the UFC is ready for an openly gay male fighter? We obviously already have an openly gay female fighter with Liz Carmouche. Do you think an openly gay male fighter uh, would do all right in the sport and I, be accepted? I, I don't know. I don't it's, know. I want to say there's a double standard, but it's just weird because, I mean, you pretty much figure a female fighter is bi or gay maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you don't want to believe that some dude who's checking your oil is liking it. Is liking it. <laughs> you know? just be, but just because they're gay doesn't mean they like rolling around with every dude in the cage. You know what I mean? I mean? Just like yeah, because you, you're, you're a man, and God forbid there's women you wouldn't want to roll around with. There is. No, no, no. In M- you know what I mean? We're talking... Just because, so just because these guys are in shape, in prime shape, then, then every gay guy wants to fuck them. Is right. what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So I think, but see, that's what I think the problem is. It's like these these guys who may be against it. I'm not saying who is and who isn't, but these guys who may be against it. It's like it's like no, we're not ready to have an openly gay fighter in the UFC. I don't think that, that we're ready for it now. So excuse me, I need to go put on my fucking my spandex and oil up my legs so I can go roll around <laughs> with another man for an hour and a half. Pardon me. Well, but we're not gay. We're unlike gay. unlike the NFL, where a lot of uh, actual NFL players. We're on, did go on Twitter to get a little trouble for having comments, negative comments to say. Not a single fighter that was interviewed said anything negative. A lot of them actually, Chuck Liddell says, if he's tough, who cares? If he's a fighter, he's a fighter. As long as he wins, it doesn't matter. 
I think the biggest problem here is guys that, that would be against would be afraid of getting their ass kicked by a gay fighter. Exactly. Jose Benavidez says, you know, I think it'd be cool to see a gay, a gay guy beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> uh, I think that would be uh, much cooler. It's definitely busting a stereotype. Um, we have TJ Dillonsaw saying, you know, it's the real world. People just need to accept it. There's probably gay fighters in the UFC right now. They just haven't admitted it publicly yet. Um, they you just know, check the order Matt, more often. Mike Brown, <laughs> Mac, Mike Brown says, you know, when you're a fighter, you have plenty to worry about already. When you're in the cage with someone trying to get, you know, take your head off, we don't really sweat the small stuff. <laughs> you check my orders, don't knock me out. <laughs> as long as we have that clear. So what do you think? Do you think that the UFC is ready for an openly gay fighter or not? I think I'm with them. I believe that they're they're you, you already have a gay fighter in there. Oh, I'm sure. That, I mean, odds are absolutely. You know, if they have a left-handed fighter, they probably got a gay fighter too. You know. Yeah. You know, it's like it's it's just being out and being open to it. Now, if they if they were to have a gay fighter in the UFC, I'd like to see it like when when the WWE had the had the gay tag team. <laughs> I want to see it as flamboyant as humanly possible. Like, they need to come out to his reign of men, you know? <laughs> <laughs> have, you heard, have you heard Josh Reddick's new walkout song for the for the A's? He nah. comes out to Careless Whisper per- by perfect. Wham. Perfect. Oh, no it's way. It's awesome. <laughs> perfect. There you go. <laughs> Never gonna dance again. <laughs> Guilt, defeat, sexy God, saxophone. No <laughs> Crazy. Uriah Faber has another fight book. This one's going down UFC 175, and the fighter he's going to be fighting is Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres. Gonna get smashed. I don't understand this fight. Me and Dennis were talking about this a little bit before the podcast. I mean, it, it does kind of make sense because really, where do both of these guys go? With Uriah Faber, he just lost his title shot up against again Head and Burrell. He's there's nobody left in the in the roster as far as that's top contender that he can fight that he hasn't already beaten. He's not going to be fighting T.J. Dillonshaw. T.J. Dillonshaw is his you know training partner and also going up for the title right now. He already beat Mike McDonald. He beat Eddie Wineland. He beat pretty much everybody that's on the list. Alex Caceres, on the other hand, he does need a big name if he's going to make a waves. He is technically riding a four fight win streak. Uh, five, you count the no contest that he technically won but then lost because he was smoking pot. Uh, none of them have been that exciting. He's got two submissions. The other three were split decisions. Uh, what do you think about this fight? I, I don't. I mean, I guess when you explain it the way you explained it, what are they going to do? I think Faber's going to maul him. I do too. But then where does Faber go from there? Can they do like, since you have a championship belt, can you have like a gatekeeper ring? Yeah. Can you do that? Like maybe we have a Give him a smaller ring. belt. Exactly. It's just a leather one with no gold on it. You know? <laughs> it's just engraved. <laughs> no, it's just arm pads. It's, just, it's just <laughs> not a belt. It's That's just fine. arm pads. That's fine. You know, I don't know. He should just he's the champion's champion, so anytime that the champ can't fight, he has to fight. There you go. I have no I idea. Like that. It's, no, it's, a shield. They don't get a belt, they get a shield. A shield. Yeah, I like that. They're just guarding guarding the belt. The belt. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. So Mark Hunt and Roy Nelson have both agreed to the Battle of the Bulls. This is going to be the fine. fight that's going to be going down in Japan ooh, in the UFC. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Shh, it's a squash. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited for that fight? Roy Nelson, Hell yes. Mark Hunt? Hell yeah. Who's going out first? Uh, uh, Mark Hunt is getting submitted by, by Roy Nelson. Submitted by Roy Nelson. Yeah. Everybody seems to forget how good Roy Nelson is on the ground. That's true. They're going to they're gonna swing and swing and swing, and then Mark Hunt's going to fall over because he's going to miss, and then Roy Nelson's going to get him to Kimura, and it's over. All right. I like your prediction. <laughs> it's not too shabby. It's, like, it's exactly that way, but a lot slower. A lot slower. <laughs> a lot slower. <laughs> So we had the Ultimate Fight Night card go down last Saturday. Was it seven TKOs, six TKOs? Um, there you want to count them? Seven, nope, seven from three, four, from five, Fight Pass. Six, seven. Yeah. Wow, what a night! It was either a knockout or a decision. Those are those are your choices. That's awesome. Knockout or decision. Uh, we had one suspension. That was um, the first fight on the preliminary card on Fox Sports Two, where Johnny Edwarder knocked out Eddie Wineland. I was very sad to see Eddie Wineland go out like that. I bet you were. Um, he then took his <laughs> mouthpiece out, threw it into the crowd, Jedi Eduardo, and they've now fined him 30 days for unsportsmanlike conduct. Because he gave away his mouthpiece? Yeah. It was a souvenir for somebody. That's what I said. Yeah, he, people throw hats. I said it was shirts. better than a hat or an autograph. He's got DNA in that thing, man. Somebody's walking home with Johnny Eduardo's spit <laughs> in... I mean, and his dental record. I mean, he could just, <laughs> in like... In their eye? You know someone's, I mean? someone had a No, I'm out. saying, what if the guy caught it and threw it in his mouth? It was like, like and Johnny Eduardo, we're brothers now. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> we're spit brothers. Yay, I'm going to go make a Johnny Eduardo clone. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's crazy that they, that's the first time they've ever given somebody a suspension due to... Uh, and a fine? 
And a fine. Well, well I mean, not like he was going to fight in 30 days anyway. That's but just weird. Whatever. Still, 30-day suspension due to uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or throwing his mouthpiece into the crowd. I don't say that's unsportsmanlike conduct. I mean, if you would have chucked his water bottle or, like, the shirt when they're trying to bring in the shirt, he, like, takes it, he's like, no, and chucks it in. Like, is that unsportsmanlike? I'll or is it you, just the mouthpiece? I'm listening to you say this, like, chucks the mouthpiece, and I'm waiting for you to say at the opponent's corner or right. like, at the knockout. Throws it at Eddie Wineland's face. What? <laughs> yeah, but, but no, that's pretty lame. So, whatever. All right, so moving on from there, you had three decisions in a row. Yeah, well, Joe, when you want to start on the fight pass, we had uh, Albert Tumanov knocking out Anthony Lapsley. Oh, shoot. Justin, Justin Salas, Salas and over Ben Wall. Ben Wall. Man. Nick Lentz over Manny Gambirian uh, with the decision. Uh, Zach Cummings' dis- decision over uh, Yannick Cabral. Kaijo- Kaioji Horiguchi over Daniel- or Daryl Montague. Ed Herman over Rafael Natal. I fell asleep during that fight. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm surprised Ed Herman didn't. Yeah. I will give Ed Herman credit, though. He is sponsored now by Floby, as you can tell by his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed with that. Awesome. Uh, Chris Carasiao gets the split decision over Lewis Smolka. I was pretty shocked by that fight. I thought Smolka took the fight really? doing pretty, pretty well. All right. What did you did not agree? Uh, I came in about halfway through the main card. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I, I forgot. Hulk smashed Ronnie uh, Ruan Potts yep. uh, from the mount. Wow. And then started singing during his... Well, does anybody know what he was singing? I don't know. He kissed the ref, right? He did kiss the ref. He <laughs> then started singing. I don't... In his interview, like, they asked him a question. He started, he's just sing, like, he started singing Pompeii. I don't know what he was that, singing. That popular song on the radio right now. Is that what it was? I don't know. I don't know. I just know that he, he literally <laughs> kissed the ref. They go, and, you know, can you tell us about the fight? And he's like, this is for the Cincinnati fans! And starts singing. Like... <laughs> WKRP in Cincinnati? Maybe. Maybe that's what it was, actually. I like it. And then just, like, just skip the question. <laughs> like, uh, Neil Magny over Tim Means, unanimous decision. Really, I, I almost want to make it a drinking game to where when somebody does actually answer the interview's question, then you have to chug an entire beer. Yeah, because that <laughs> because rarely happens. What were you thinking when he got you in this position right here? It looked pretty bad. Well, yeah, I just want to, I want to thank my mom, <laughs> God, my sponsors. Uh, and, and, of course, Joe Rogan, thanks for being here. Dana White for giving me the shot. After party is at the Hilton. Peace. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that's because we have no idea what he was thinking in this position. Well, my favorite is, what were you thinking? He's like, oh, man, that's a good shot right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I punched him right there. I was just thinking, man, look. He's just, like, watching his own replay, like, mm-hmm. oh, impressed yeah. with his work but not giving any. Oh, damn good job. Like, uh, right there is when I knew I had this motherfucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right there. Darren Crutchank over Eric Koch. Head kicking punches. Yeah, that was a nice one. It was pretty nice. Costas Philippou over Lorenz Larkin. Mm. That was pretty pretty vicious. Yeah, that kind of caught me off guard. And then Matt motherfucking Brown over Eric Silva with decidedly the best first round in ever. MMA history. I don't know. There, I don't know if ever, but it's there's quite a, bit. Say, a lot of people are saying it's a lot of people are saying it. Round. Yeah. How did Silva stay alive? That, a lot of people are asking that same question. How did Matt Brown not get submitted? Because he's a genius and he's good on the ground. We know this. Yeah, I was he's just, Matt Motherfucking Brown. Man, he, a couple times he had it. He had it cinched in. Yeah, and then a couple times I mean, Eric Matt, Silva's out. Yeah, he's fucking out. And I'm like, how is the ref not calling this? I was like, he gonna call? He's gonna call? No, wait, gotta wait for the blood. Gotta yeah. wait for the blood. Yeah. Once he started, and bleeding. the whole time this guy's in my head because he's like, no, sometimes these guys got fight in them. That's what they do. They they wait. Come till, on, kid, you can do it. Matt Brown literally <laughs> said, I mean, other than the getting kicked in the gut. That definitely hurt Matt Brown. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, what was that? I've been looking. I he, mean, like he got, three, three times he got gut checked. He got kicked in the liver, and he straight out says, I got kicked in the liver, and it shut me down. Yeah, and He's then like, he got punched in it once, and then it was almost it the same thing. And he says, you know how I, I walked through it? He's like, I literally covered up so he wouldn't punch me in the, in the liver and like was begging him to punch me in the face <laughs> so that I wouldn't get punched in the liver so I could recover. Yeah. He's like, because he hit me good, and I knew he wasn't going to knock me out, so I just begged him to punch me in the face. So I wouldn't get hit, kicked in the liver or punched in the liver so I could recover. Once I was recovered, I went back to fighting. <laughs> yeah, because nice. the punch one was funny because yeah. he, he blocked a kick. He was like, ha-ha, and he's like, oh. Yeah. He's like, oh, man, you got me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Matt Brown now would like to fight Nick Diaz. I think that's an awesome fight. Hell yes. That is an awesome fight, and I think you could pay Matt Brown and Nick Diaz his $500,000 that he wants or whatever the hell he wants for his. <laughs> well, I don't, didn't, I, didn't Dana White say he's not going to give him a title shot? Yeah, yet? which I, is, that sucks for Matt Brown. It sucks really that he's sucks. not. I mean, there's nobody else there left, really. Yeah. But, yeah, but Nick Diaz. He wants to fight Nick Diaz. Let's have him fight Nick Diaz. Well, I don't see why Nick Diaz. Yeah, would if want that's to fight what that if that's either. what he wants, that'd be and great. that and that's a big name that he's been looking for. Yeah, definitely. Especially on a seven fight win streak, you can't. Yeah. So I, I I'm pretty happy with with the overall results of the card. Yeah. Totally. If anybody if anybody bet on Matt Brown, you won two to one. That's pretty awesome. 
That really? Yeah. I think I can't believe he's an underdog. That was dumb. Yeah. You can't believe it. You said it like three times in the interview. Still can't believe Are it. Are you going to remind Forrest that he's retired? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Forrest, do you know what your ear looks like? <laughs> Satellite dishes. He'll tell you that. <laughs> he's like a white Reggie Miller. I don't know. <laughs> and I didn't. I honestly didn't really know that Matt Brown was the underdog in that fight. I just kind of meant like being the underdog all the time. In life. Yeah. yeah. Just in life. <laughs> You're an underdog in life, <laughs> underdog, Matt. Underdog going into the Ultimate Fighter house. Underdog. Just, uh, just, yes. In general, man. Now that I think about it, it's really fucked up what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even worse than you thought so did you watch the <laughs> ultimate fighter absolutely and what'd you think other than the, wow this was filmed in uh october <laughs> when they brought in the pumpkin <laughs> he brought was, in the pumpkin text me this is filmed in october <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was filmed early this year man i really no did. they're just doing they're just doing a halloween in january bro I was like, <laughs> he is confused like one of those days where you go home take a nap you wake up it's dark you're like oh god i lost a whole day yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what, what? It felt like. did i go to work <laughs> kind of, i was like what the hell <laughs> October when they filmed it? No, it kind of blew me away. And, uh, but aside from the fight being super boring, it was a cool episode. I'm excited for next next episode where Dana White flips out. Yeah, I've never seen Dana White lose his shit that much, especially at the judges, at the refs, at uh, the athletic commission, at yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, if you missed it, I mean, next week is next week is an episode to watch, man. It's it's serious. Dana White, uh, they of course they obviously edited it up and they spliced it yeah. together. But We're going to see Ian Stevens going up against Roger Zapta. And and apparently you, somebody loses points and somebody else wins because of it. I see it. I see like down. I heard or something about downward elbows. Yeah. Dana White le- leaves the uh, uh, the room and he's saying, "Stop the fight, Steve Mazzagatti. I'm out of here." Something like something to that effect. I mean, we'll it was such happens, chaos, yeah. but it's going to be an excellent episode to watch. You got to make sure that you tune in. If you haven't been watching the Ultimate Fighter, uh, this might pull you back in. I'm just yeah. saying, it was it was a pretty cool preview. It got me pumped up. Pretty good. I mean, you got to see the one dude wearing a dress and. Uh, that got me pumped up. Too. I know you're watching yeah, the whole time yeah, since then. There's two two fighters in there dressed up like women. You can't go wrong there at all. <laughs> uh, one who had the dress pre packed. Pre packed. Yeah, the other guy had to make his. Can't you just request them when they go out and pick you up with like lobster? Yeah. Like, yeah. can you also get me a French made outfit? Yeah. Is that cool? They uh, do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, because they, they'll pick you up cigarettes and chew too, yeah. which, like, I don't even get that. You can't have a phone. No contact with the outside world, but you have cigarettes. <laughs> it's like we were talking the other day, man. Nothing makes you smile more than seeing a jogger smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that wraps it up. Quick episode today. Not not too bad, not too shabby. Uh, so big thanks to Fight Fans Radio Network, of course, Speaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Of There's where you can find us. Look up Split Decision MMA Podcast, and you'll find our own Speaker, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, and iTunes. Subscribe, you won't miss anything. It's uh, it's easy money right there. Find us on Instagram as well as Twitter, SD underscore MMA. And uh, what was it? Facebook, Split Decision MMA Podcast. So Bueller and Dodge from the Ruloff, Ruloff Family Inc. Studios signing off saying have a good night and we'll see you at the fights.